but it is race number five. First, the chairman's sprint prize. We're going in race order for the preview of the Group 1s. And Lucky Swayness, he's won his last four. It could have been his last six, but he was terribly unlucky in the Longjean Hong Kong sprint. Wellington beat Lucky Swayness in that race. He's run placing three times since. He's aiming for his third in a row. Site success is back from Dubai trial on Tuesday morning. Duke Wai, he's also back from the Alcor sprint, as is Flaming Rib. He comes here after 11th in Dubai, but did win right-handed at Doha two runs ago. Aguri represents Japan, and Master 8 gets Joe Marira back on board, and Joe does have a very good winning record on Master 8. The speed for this one, Tom, they did ride uh, Master 8 forward last time, perhaps not this week. I think they've kind of got to uh, with uh, Master 8 really because look, that was clearly his best run for quite some time off the front last time out. So I really think they have to roll the dice and go forward. Uh, spoke briefly to John Size uh, the other day after the, the barrier draw and he said um, they'd be quite happy to be either up on the pace or they're quite happy to take maybe a, a trailing position. So we'll, we'll see how it pans out. Flaming Rib and uh, Lucky Swainess. I think probably that draw in the end, Paul, is a good draw for Lucky Swainess because if he if he is a little bit slower away, they can sort of press forward up on the outside and not get snookered back on the fence like they did on International Day. Yeah, I agree. And Aguri, sort of uh, the Japanese runner, he's another sort of on-pace runner, but he's drawn outside Lucky Swainess. So I think he'll follow him into the race. I th you're right. I think Master 8 will, will probably go forward and they'll probably try and get outside side success. But this just illustrates that he might have to work to, to get there early from his draw because he's drawn wide as well. And side success has drawn the rail, so I know he's going to hold... He he'll want the rail. You don't think he'll give the lead up site success if Master 8 comes knocking? I don't think so. I mean, James McDonald won't want to get into a speed battle, so there is that, that option for him to give up. But I think he'd like to hold the rail, and the horse does run well from the front. All right, that's the boys discussing the speed map. But recent winners, Tom, it's all about Wellington. Certainly is. He's looking to become a three-time winner of the Chairman's Sprint Prize, of course, last season's champion sprinter. Mr Stunning has done it, and a couple there for John Stein's beat the clock and eye victory. But it is a stiff task, I think, for Wellington this year. He's got to take on Lucky Swainess and to see if his trainer's happy with where he is at. Nick spoke to Richard Gibson at the barrier draw. Richard Gibson, Wellington, with just seen the barrier draw for the Chairman's Sprint Prize. You've got gate number two, your first reaction to where he's drawn. Yeah, you know, it's an easy watch. It's a small field, so I don't think any of the trainers would be particularly interested by draw numbers today. On the horse himself, how has he been leading up to this big day, Richard? A day that he's obviously been a, a huge part of in the last uh, couple of seasons. Uh, absolutely. It's a it's time of the year that he really likes. He really thrives at this time of the year. Probably a bit more ease in the ground than a couple of months ago. So we're, we're very happy where we're at. Has he had a, a similar sort of preparation to the last couple of years that, that you brought him here in, in tip-top shape? Yeah, you know, he, he does. He likes, you know, uh, he really does like this time of the year. It's not too hot for him. And the ground's, you know, got a bit of moisture in it. So uh, we're looking forward to the big day. And do you think now as he's sort of getting that bit older that perhaps that little bit of give in the ground is, is what he now desires? He certainly doesn't like it when it's too fierce, yeah. Um, and just obviously what will be a special occasion if he was able to win. He's, he's won the last two of these, as we've mentioned. To make it three would be, would be quite something, and very much a feather in your cap and, and everyone involved. Oh, I've been racing for some time now, and it's very rare that a horse comes back to defend his, his third title in, in, in any division. And to do it in the Group 1 division is uh, exceptional. And, uh, you know... We'll, uh, we'll fight every yard for it. Um, you know, we know we've got some good horses to beat. Richard, you've trained in Europe. You've obviously got a stack of experience. Keeping that longevity with a horse like him, it's certainly not an easy task, especially here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a great achievement to come back and, and, and fight for your title third time in a row. So it's, it's all credit to the horse. You'd have full respect, I'm sure, for your rivals. Lucky Swainess obviously would seemingly be his biggest danger. And both he and Lucky Swainess have met in the past, I guess, massive respect for a horse like him and what he's done. Absolutely. You know, the moment I saw Lucky Swainess on, on debut, you know, he's a, even in the trials, he was very, very impressive. And um, they've done a great job with the horse. And uh, it's great there are some new boys coming up the ranks in, in Hong Kong. That's Richard. We move on now, Tom, to the Sprint Cup. Now, this is last start where Lucky Swainess beats Wellington Master 8 and Courier Wonder. We're going to show the start because he wasn't brilliant out. It was more Lucky Swainess of old, this race, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and he is becoming a little bit of a frustration for uh, Zach uh, that he is just not jumping away. Clint, he gets into the gates and fidgets around a bit. He won't stand to still and just loses concentration. And then when the, the starter pushes the button, he's just slightly on the, the back foot, but he's got that speed after Paul to 
pick himself up and put him in the right position. Yeah, exactly. And look, he, it's hit and miss, isn't it? I mean, if he jumps well, uh, no problems. This was him of old, though, when he didn't jump well. But he, as you say, he, he's good enough to put himself in the position. So I'm not too worried about him jumping. You, you can see here he's just a little bit keen on the, the outside, maybe a little bit. He's been a bit keen from all reports on his uh, recent couple of uh, bits of track work as well uh, mm -hmm. to uh, Lucky Swainess, where he's had uh, a fairly full-on season. But he, he tracked Wellington to the race here, uh, Paul. This was when Master 8 led up last uh, time out. Yeah. He was clearly a better horse this day uh, leading. Yeah, it definitely was. And that, that's why I think he will go forward. But uh, look, Lucky Swainess has definitely had the wood on Wellington his last few starts. Uh, there's no question. And he did uh, really accelerate well here and win nicely. So look, it's still a Quinella for me because Wellington, you can't write him off. He's won in the last two and he, we know he's a class horse. And they were well clear of the rest there. Yeah. Can you see a scenario both of them having no bad luck in the race that Wellington beats Lucky Swainess at all? Uh, not on its recent runs. Not on the recent runs. But um, we, we've seen bad luck with Lucky Swainess before. Yeah. And they, they won't want to get caught on the inside. And they, they won't yeah. this time round with yeah. that sort of draw. But look, um, what Wellington's run into Lucky Swainess three times since International Day being beaten in all, all of them. Mm. And uh, he had no luck the time before that either. Lucky Swainess. We're off to Dubai now, Tom. And we've got Sight Success running fourth. Duke Wai fifth and Flaming Reb, that is him wider out on the track. He was only average this day. Yeah, he was he was quite disappointing uh, here. They were sort of saying maybe false ground, but look, the, the Hong Kong horses here, and these two Hong Kong horses, Paul, um, Sight Success and also Duke Wai, they're, they're a, a notch below Lucky Swainess and Wellington, so Flaming Rib would have to improve a, a great deal, I think, to figure here. Yeah, he's going to get the perfect run, You're, but I agree. I, I totally agree. Of the two, side success, I thought, really fought nicely there. So he's the one I'm probably a little bit more interested. Yep. But you can never write Duke Way off, because we know he's, he's a strong horse. But... Look, in this race, I'm going to go with uh, Sight Success in the numbers rather than Duke White. OK, here is Sight Success, Paul. Now, he's had three trials since he's been back from Dubai. This one was Tuesday morning. It certainly wasn't a quiet out-the-back trial, and he looked to do it very uh, very nicely. Yeah, he did, didn't he? So, look, he seems to have come back in, uh, in good order. You know, you always wonder when these horses travel, does it? how much does it take out of them? But looking at him, I think he's come back really well. So... That's why I've included him in the numbers, but um, he's yeah, there was nothing wrong with the trial. No, he's under a good hold in this trial. That was uh, Flying Ace uh, uh, winning it, and uh, he was under a, a, a tight rein there. Um, I, I think he's certainly the, the best of the, the other horses outside of the top two. All right, so uh, locals for one, two, three. More on Flaming a Rib now, Tom. This is two starts ago, and this is in Doha, where he won the Dukan Sprint. This was his first go right-handed. And he was able to win it. And they were saying during the week, during interviews, that he is a better horse around a bend. Yeah, and of course, in Dubai, he was down to straight. Uh, so, look, the, the bend may suit him more. But, look, I'm, I'm not convinced on what he did in Dubai, Paul, by any stretch. And on his UK form, second in the, the Commonwealth the Cup. But that was his career best run. He needs to do something like that and more to figure here. Yeah, that, that worries me as well uh, with him. Uh, look, the, the things in his favour is right-handed. It is a band. He has got a good draw. Those are the things in his favour. It's just whether he's classy enough to, to, to feature in this. More international form now. A Paul with Aguri. Now, he comes across with uh, most of his racing over further than the 1,200 metres of this race. Uh, indeed, he's only had the two starts over 1,200 for a fourth and a fifth. Too short for him? Yeah, look, it does look it on paper, but he's going to get the pace to suit Aguri, and you can never write the Japanese horses off as well um, uh, with, with this horse. He's still a, sort of a youngish horse, so he's still coming through the grades as well. So I'm not sure how much upside he's got. I think there's a bit there. Yeah, the, the thing that worried me was the, the trip 1,200 metres, two goes that just for one fourth placing. He loomed as a chance, I thought, last time out in the, the Takamatsunomi Akinin, but peaked on his run, and the, the Hong Kong market's got him at a, a big price. The, the local punters are going to take a, a big sit against the, the British sprinter and the Japanese sprinter. OK, so watch the internationals perhaps in the first of the Group 1s. That means it's all about the locals. Yeah, and that, that's how I see it. I think one to beat two, lucky sway Ness. And one, I am going to put a Guri in because I don't want to write the Japanese off. We know they've got some pretty good sprinters coming in. And he he is a younger horse coming through and sight success. One, two, seven, three. Yes, yeah, between the, the top two, but Lucky Swainess is going to go around a, a very, very short price, and he's definitely the, the horse to beat. He's a couple of years younger than Wellington. He's got the best part of a length on him now. So one to beat two. Sight success goes in. I'm actually going to throw in Courier Wonder because he has placed at Group 1 level in the past compared to the other horse I was sort of tossing up against, Duke Wise, had three runs in Group 1 company, never figured top four. But Courier Wonder hasn't been going badly. So one, two, three, four in the sprint.